leveraging AI's pers uh, respective connectionist and reasoning approaches, as well as the array of learning methodologies between supervised and unsupervised learning, will usher in new a slew of use cases in 2022 that will revolutionize the efficiency and scope of these technologies for everyday business demands. Now, now to um, introduce our speaker, Mr. Marvin Zoilo. Mr. Marvin a, is a certified HR professional, a chartered and cer um, certified professional and practitioner in human resources, a certified management consultant, and a licensed professional teacher with almost two decades of experience in HR and OD services, and of course, a track record in driving sales and boosting company morale, working for top multinational companies such as Rolls-Royce, DuPont, accumulating internationally recognized units in Lin Six Sigma, Legal Eagle, and of course, OSHA, Zoom Financials and Ethics and Compliance. And of course, some of uh, his major areas of expertise include curriculum development, performance management, supervisory um, and managerial skills development, project management, strategic planning, environmental, health and safety, and of course, ISO trainings. Now to break the fear, the doubts, and a way to maximize the role of artificial intelligence in learning, we have Mr. Marvin Soilo. Good morning, Mr. Marvin. Good morning, Jester, and uh, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody for today's uh, assembly. And uh, I'm very privileged and honored that I was invited to this event. Thank you very much. And actually, we are very excited with your topic, no? E-learning, analyzing the role of AI, no? Because we used to uh, read only the AIs, no? Back then in the textbooks, but now it's beginning to happen, no? Not just uh, in our daily lives, but as as that uh, we are now in the uh, um, era of uh, transformational you know, technology, et cetera. Now, um, Mr. Marvin, feel free to share your PowerPoint now so that okay. uh, the viewers Real can do see so. it. Thank you, Jester, and uh, thank you also for the generous um, introduction. So I'll share my screen for everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Just give me a few seconds here. Sure. Yeah, I've, I've listened to the other present presenters and uh, they're really, you know, very interesting and uh, mm -hmm. I got a lot of information, which I think will be very valuable also in my um, uh, segment. So let me know if you're able to see the screen. Yes, we can. Can you please uh, put, uh, click the hide uh, button window for the stream yet? Okay. All right, there you go. Take, out, uh, take it away, Mr. Marvin. Yes, thank you again. So good morning to everybody. Good afternoon and good evening, depending on where you are at this time. Uh, my name is Marvin Zoilo. I've been in HR for quite some time, but at the same time, I also used to teach. And uh, today I will be uh, giving you some information on uh, the role of AI, especially in terms of e-learning. So um, like uh, they have mentioned, you know, the, the work I've done so far in HR is uh, revolving around, you know, uh, the experiences I've had with with online uh, platforms as well as, as well as e-learning. So it took me some time to uh, also understand uh, with our organization, ASEAN HR Leader Circle Philippines, wherein we are connected with five other countries in Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, uh, Indonesia, and and of course here in the Philippines. So. Um, What's really important is uh, for for us to understand, at least here in the Philippine setting, is that you know globalization is really a big uh, portion of what has been happening. Uh, not only with the BPOs coming in at the late 1990s, but at the same time, um, when we talk about uh, e-learning and artificial intelligence, this is not something new. Actually, uh, there's a lot of industries who have been using or which have been using this in the manufacturing, in the factory setting, and also in the medical, uh, in the medical setting. But of course, in the corporate world, um, as we go along with industrialization and globalization, we had to also innovate and understand what would the Philippines be in terms of the global setting. Right. So, and that's what we have seen so far with about uh, 30 to 40 percent of the the usage of uh, AI and e-learning uh, in the BPO setting uh, because of the 
uh, influences of uh, different companies that is being held here in the Philippines, right? Uh, and they are multinationals that are using global programs and global um, cascades and implementations within their organizations. So if you're going to look at it from an Asian perspective, as to just you know, put context as to how the Philippines is uh, you know, moving towards to uh, definitely the occupations in Asia, at least at the, at, the, at the end of the year 2000s, going to the 2020s, right, which we are here right now, according to ADO in 2018, um, there's a lot of courses uh, and also at the same time, these occupations, which had um, definitely propped up. Uh, so from the traditional uh, traditional workforce, as you can see at the bottom of the diagram or the graph, uh, you know, the medical and the sales workforce are still there. You know, there's still plenty of uh, workers in Asia that is geared towards that. But at the same time, uh, by the year 2010, you know, there's uh, occupations that had moved forward or at least taken over the market. So in terms of the workforce, there's a high demand of IT technicians, software developers, and even uh, software architects and designers. So uh, this requires a lot of high cognitive and social skills uh, requiring Asia, you know, especially for Southeast Asia, uh, to 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 be more at par into that. So that's why in the last uh, the last five years, Singapore has always been on the top uh, in terms of the global uh, literacy rate, and at the same time, in terms of the knowledge that um, being prioritized uh, in terms of the educational system, so that you know the workforce that will be available after they finish uh, or they graduate from school, uh, they'll be able to fill in these new occupations in Asia which is more technologically, you know, advanced and available. So if you, if you look at it, the work that we had from last year because of the pandemic, and as we feel it right now, as we say the words new normal, uh, it, it's quite interesting to say it's a new normal because the normal has always changed, right? So since the time of, you know, the advent of computers and the, uh, in the early 1950s, 1960s, as from it's being used from supercomputers and it becomes, you know, available to the to the uh, to the market, uh, and of course the coming on of compute, uh, you know, personal computers at home, right in the 1980s, uh, and now in the industrial revolution 4.0 that we're in, where the usage of internet and um, the web uh, is definitely now more than ever. Uh, defines how we look at work and how it, it has revolutionized the work that we're doing right now. So if you just notice, there are four main, you know, aspects as to how, you know, AI and even e-learning uh, is definitely influencing how we are behaving as, a, you know, as a species, as a human being. So definitely uh, you will see artificial intelligence incorporated into the work that we're doing. We might not be able to uh, notice it, but AI has, has always been there since the 1980s in terms of banking. So just imagine when it was uh, introduced with ATM, that is already artificial intelligence with, in terms of EDS, you know, computer to computer who are talking together. So at the same time, robotics has always been, always been part of the work we've been doing since the 1970s, 1980s, we're in, you know, assembly lines uh, in many of the manufacturing and factory um, industries that we have here in the Philippines as well as abroad. So definitely, you know, these uh, machines are the ones who are working uh, to make the assembly line much faster. Uh, in the 2020s, of course, in the year 2000s, right, the advent of the internet has definitely taken over how we how we uh, conduct our business, how we conduct our daily tasks, and definitely the the influence of the Internet of Things, where and you have just on your mobile mobile phone or your tablet, you can easily access your homes, you can easily access your um, your company via via remote, and all of these things are available uh, in terms of the operating system and the real time. 
uh, tracking of the information that you need uh, for the, the work that you're doing. Uh, and lastly, of course, machine learning is uh, something that, you know, um, it's not about the uh, the robots try, trying to take over our job, but uh, there's a lot of things that we have learned so far in terms of machine learning, right? So it, it provides insight as to how we can even improve the way that we provide our user experience, make it easier for our, our customers to... Uh, um, to interact and to have that interface available whenever, you know, a human being may not be available at the time and at the same time in terms of scaling those services to them. So if you just notice, according to the World Economic Forum in, in 2019, before the pandemic happened, uh, you know, it, it's been there. Um, uh, when I attended the ASEAN um, ASEAN uh, convention in 2015, as far as as far back as six years ago, the fourth industrial revolution has always been a staple conversation. And you know, there's a lot of talks about it. There's a lot of um, um, articles that are being written uh, saying that you know there's definitely going to be jobs lost and disrupted because of this and because of the things that we've mentioned already prior. And, but at the same time, because of this industrial revolution, more jobs will be created. So basically it's replacing uh, some of those jobs that will be lost and even more. So it's actually more on the positive side. It's just so happened that when a lot of people are writing these articles in terms of e-learning, artificial intelligence, there's this um, smoke screen of, you know, making people believe that you know we have to be replaced as a human being where in fact it's not so we're saying that these jobs that are being lost are because of futurism so it means that in the traditional way of doing things are being taken over to make it more efficient more cost effective and at the same time um you know much better for our customer experience right so example uh the mail carrier um uh, business, right? Where in many of the uh, not so millennial uh, attendees of this uh, forum and this assembly may still remember, you know, a mailman giving you your your post, right? But six to eight percent of that job has been taken over by emails, right? So a lot of us are no longer sending out posts in the mail, but instead we use electronic mail, which is so much convenient, right? But it doesn't mean that you know the people who have lost their job will forever no longer have a job, which we'll talk out a little later in terms of e-learning. So so many others like farm laborers or even you know drill press operators and all of this you know um, manual labor uh, that is being done, it's actually been replaced because they have been repetitive. These are these are easily outsourced and it can easily be used with a touch of a button and a machine. The good news is, you know, out of the 70 plus million, it's a hundred, almost 180, 190%, you know, um, replacement of new jobs. So this new jobs, you know, is definitely about learning, you know, the adoption of many companies into this new technology. So the technology of using robot robotics, using you know um, a lot of this uh, computer uh, technologies, applications on the phone, applications on your on your PCs, and even applications that will be more available in terms of you know automation, supply chain, and of course uh, in terms of financial services. Right before uh, many years ago, you'll need to talk to a broker or a stock uh, stock market. Um, uh, person so that you can you know invest but now there's online right so but it doesn't mean that that uh, you know that the stockbroker will lose the job right it's a it's a it's a measure of thinking what's next and that's that's exactly the 133 million jobs to be created it's about soft skills rather than hard skills right so in the past we think that you know in in terms of ai and of course e-learning um, connection to that. 
we don't know what the future of jobs will be, but we know where it's going. So the jobs we may not know because example, just here in the Philippines, right? Um, there were courses in, 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 in the colleges, in the universities that were not that there. Example, gaming was not uh, even a valid university course 20 years ago. People will laugh at it. But because of the advent of, of technology, including artificial intelligence and machine learning and you know, programming and designing, these jobs became more trend, become, become more um, available now and this, the skills are more transferable now 20 versus 20 years ago, right? Which is very exclusive only to, you know, the, the, the intelligent and the genius people. But now it's more available because now the jobs, we know where it's going. We just don't know what title it's going to be. So that's why from OECD um, in 2019, they mentioned that you know, across the ASEAN region, we have those 11 countries, including the Philippines in it. Um, there's a big stake as to how people perceive these jobs being lost. It is because of the percentage of how we, uh, how we deal with the skills that we don't have. So basically 32% of these skills needs to be reshaped radically. As of this time in the Philippines, the reality is even if even if the pandemic has actually boosted, you know, the way that we look at technology, it's just example, we have those applications for shopping, right? We have the delivery services, you have the courier services, we even have, you know, department stores open their applications on the phones to, to make it easier for people and convenient for people to purchase online, right? Uh, unlike before. Uh, just go to the supermarket, go to the department store. But now because of the restrictions of, of the pandemic and the virus has led people to be more adoptive to the new way of doing things, right? So imagine just here in the Philippines, six out of 10 Filipino workers and many of the Asian workers doesn't have, they don't have the basic computer skills or experience. So that is where the lag of this uh, performance that we are trying to bridge the gap. And that is where the fear is coming from. So if you just notice, um, I've read this article coming from the Bill Charania um, just a few years ago, uh, mentioning that, you know, for many companies are looking at the future in terms of business and innovation, which is not new to us, right? A lot of companies have been doing this, exponential organizations have been doing this, but you know, now more than ever, just in the last six years, if you notice, there are now unicorn businesses. The word unicorn businesses has never been in the vocabulary of the normal masses or in the lingua franca of the Filipinos. Most of the time we associate unicorn by, with children, <laughs> right? But now it's about business because now more than ever, the growth that we have been seeing in the organizations, in the, in the businesses, even in the non-government uh, agencies. This growth is exponential because of the disruption that has been, has been done because of the technology. So now more than ever in the last 100 years, you know, we have been looking at methodologies that are linear. These are steady growth. You know, we have companies that we know, you know, family uh, businesses, right, that has been steadily growing, but throughout decades. But now in the last six years, last 10 years, this growth is because of disruption. Just imagine, you know, the advent of, I'm not sure if I can say the words, you know, TikTok, Instagram, I know we are not sponsored by them, but these are regular things that we're using. And these are billion dollar businesses, right? And more technology, are being is now more than ever that has become the new trend in terms of business and innovation. That's why the future of AI and e-learning is definitely the way to go because of cutting edge technology. So everybody's leveraging on this. So just imagine if you're in a business from a traditional perspective, maybe you are mass producing. So uh, definitely the mastery, the printing is going to be very useful. 
in terms of if you are in the medical field or in the research field, biotechnology, especially now more than ever, people had been inundated by, you know, the vaccines and of course the coronavirus, you know, biotechnology has been, you know, lit up again, you know, how do we make it faster in terms of vaccines, making, you know, drugs, making new, you know, headways in terms of medicine, in the field of medicine, right? In terms of learning, in terms of training, right? Many of the companies had been traditionally inundated and accustomed by doing, um, going to conventions, right? To hotels or going abroad, going to universities. But now, you know, there's a lot of, you know, thought going online. And that's where also deep learning is about, you know, understanding the behavior by using technology. That's why machine learning and deep learning is coming into the availability of knowledge now in the internet alone is providing this deep learning, understanding how we are learning itself and how do we use information and, and, and how do we um, consume this to make it translatable into the work that we're doing. And that I think a lot of the educational systems around the world, including the Philippines, need to step up to that. And of course, in terms of you know, consumer, uh, consumer experience, definitely chatbots, you know, you don't need to have a person available 24 seven to answer your questions. You know, a lot of us are doing on, on social media wherein you just type in a question, but there's somebody answering it, but actually that's not a human being. It's actually a chatbot, a chatbot that is um, being programmed to answer your questions. So that's why it's pretty important as to the role of artificial intelligence, especially in terms of e-learning, because this is the workforce of tomorrow. Now more than ever, according to Frost and Sullivan, um, you know, connected to the Dell Technologies um, research a few years ago, the children of today is going to be the future in the next five years. So 2025 is definitely just around the corner. And for the last 10 years, since I started, you know, doing research and also attending uh, webinars, seminars, and conventions and conferences regarding technology and, and the fourth industrial revolution, it's now more than ever nearest that 2025 as against to in 2015 when I started. So what we've been saying has always been consistent to the projections of artificial intelligence and e-learning because those children are now being part of the workforce, especially here in the Philippines and not just in the Philippines, but also in the ASEAN region, right? So it means that now at 91%, this technology influenced the job choices of the kids. They're no longer kids, but they're now part of the workforce. And because of the pandemic as well, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy where in freelancing is now more, you know, uh, people are more gravitated towards that because of, you know, working from home. And that means that that 80% is you need cutting edge technology. And we've seen that happen last year when the, when the pandemic happened, when the pandemic started, you know, you know, traditional businesses suddenly started to make these quick decisions, you know, that have never been done ever in the traditional setting, wherein you, you started to send home, uh, send to, to people's home, your employees' home, you know, desktops, which have, we have policies, right, that you can't, you can't bring home this desktop. So that suddenly this has been broken so definitely the preference to choose, you know, where you're working and at the same time getting your education that leads to e-learning has now existed. You know, it has brought us to that 90% where more people are not afraid of going back to work because of the COVID, but, you know, considerably a lot of people would rather choose to work from home because they have tasted, you know, the convenience of it, right? So that's where also the future of, of tomorrow is going to be, right? Those workforce who are in the ages of 19 to 25 until 2025, those are the preferences that, you know, the, the next workforce here in the Philippines is going to be. So that's why it's critical. 
the, the meat of what I'm trying to talk about, you know, the role of AI and at the same time in terms of e-learning is this. The next jobs available in the next few years is definitely about putting people, special Filipinos, to ensure that every 1.5 years, you reskill yourself because the next jobs, as we mentioned earlier, we don't know what the next job is going to be. But what, what we know is we know where it's going, which is going to be technology. It's going to be definitely about what's next in terms of artificial intelligence, machine learning, you know, uh, all of this technologically advanced you know, positions. So it means that every 1.5 years to two years, you need a current skill. It doesn't mean that, your, that our former skills will not be useful. It will still be useful. However, it needs an upgrade, you know, just like anything else, like your computer or your cell phones, it's needed upgrade. So jobs are going to be very diverse, especially at work at home, which we do now, as you can see, online shopping is there. So it, the convenience of working at home is now not limited to just the principles of the business. It's now being accepted worldwide. You know, working at home and flexible work arrangement has always been there since the 1980s, you know, abroad in other countries outside of the Philippines. You know, working remotely has always been there, uh, including in the US, in Australia, and other European Union uh, countries. They have been adapting to work from home since 1980s, right? But here in the Philippines alone, these are opportunities that is relatively new to our tastes, right? So that's why e-learning is the primary platform to ensure, like example, for recruitment, where I am part of HR, the way that we look at, you know, ensuring that you know the learning will continue or even onboarding new hires or even making sure that we have employees are continuously upgraded continuously um uh learning or continuously getting you know their skill sets you know upskilled and upskilled right so this e-learning platform is the best way to go and not just because of quantum computers there are applications that are being available now on cell phones on tablets you know in many other uh in many other media so just like this example from the picture i got from adb thanks so much uh credits to the owner this this uh, particular silicone or whatever that we're that we're looking at, you know, this technology we think is not available. Actually, it is already available. I just been to Japan in in twenty eighteen, and I've seen the show in Tokyo convention. You know, there is a big cabinet. You think it's a glass cabinet, but actually, it is. It's actually an LED. So, when you, you as a click of a button, you know, it, we con deconstruct normal things so this is actually a technology that is available it's not just not available with the masses but why did i use this in this slide because it makes us reshape the way we think so technology has definitely influenced the way we become creative and these are the things that are around us these are the things that we think will be the future of work so again, the jobs, we don't know what jobs are going to be available, but we know where it's going. So just example, data scientists and big data were not available 15 years ago, you know, when I was still studying, but now it's a staple. You know, people are getting degrees in data science and data analytics and technology, which is now a staple in many of the organization. Me as an HR, I see that, you know, it's very valuable that we have new types of jobs available as we evolve. So the World Economic Forum mentions that, you know, what's going to be a mainstay? The mainstay is not about the technology. The mainstay are the three Cs, the creativity, the critical thinking, and the co-creation. I'll focus on the co-creation because I'm, an, you know, from an HR perspective, the jobs we don't know is the jobs that, you know, most of the time recruitment, HR and OD will be looking into and analyzing, okay, what does this look like? So from a from a perspective of how this 
future of jobs going to be in relation to e-learning and artificial intelligence is that we need to rethink the institution of work. And this is about, you know, the collective intelligence that we already have. So the, the, a lot of organizations now, which, you know, where um, the new millennial and the Gen Zs are gravitating towards to is that they, they want organizations which are green, which are, you know, they have care economy. So it's about innovation, the skills and the quality of jobs more than the pay. And of course, if, if you have, you know, highly intelligent, soft skills driven, and of course, a highly upskilled technological, you know, background, the quality and the, the job pay will go hand in hand, right? So the focus now is about upscaling and upskilling. So these soft skills will be the determining factors wherein the jobs, like we mentioned, we've lost and disrupted. We focus now on e-learning by providing learning on this new focus about empathy, coaching, personality development, you know, negotiation, time management, communication. And believe me, these are not new to us. Surprisingly, we have heard this over and over again, but it's just a matter of where do we see it? What platform do we see it? So of course, I will not tell specific brands of, of platforms uh, because we are not um, uh, sponsored by them, but e-learning is focusing now on these things. And I think if there are uh, audiences here who are in the business of e-learning, these are the upscaling and upscaling focus that these e-learning courses are available. Of course, on top of the technical skills that many of the companies are, are, are providing, right? But it's about going back to the basics, which is soft skills. Because if you do have this, if you're creative, if you're able to coach, you're able to have you know, great negotiation skills and communication skills, you're able to apply this no matter what kind of technology that you have in your organization. So that's why the methodology of agility, so the agile, um, the agile mentality and mindset, and of course, at the same time, the agile um, uh, principles will have to be incorporated, right? Of course, agile, uh, agile principles have been used before with, with computers, right, with, with IT, but it has long begun, you know, to, to be adopted into other fields of work and even fields of education. So this work practices enables now people to be more appropriate in terms of policies, you know, workspaces, that even the skill sets and practices in the workplace that is being, you know, implemented. And more so, for example, me in HR, I'm looking more on the processes and the infrastructure that will wholly or holistically design how to make these rapid changes available for my organization or the organizations that we're working for. And it's about the collaboration, you know, to make sure that each unit, whether you're in IT, accounting, HR, operations, you're in the after sales support and most of these things, you know, it's an explicit supportive aspect of the business that we can apply these three main functions of agile organization to incorporate it into an agile culture. Therefore, it becomes a workplace that is agile as well. So the design of the organization and also even the offices, right? Of course, now because of the pandemic, it might not be as agile, but the adoption you know, the adaptation, I mean, of many organization into working from home and having a, you know, a flexible work arrangement, right, which is what we, what we have happening right now in the Philippines, that is also an agile work practice. We just didn't know it or we didn't realize it. But this can continue to be improved with policies, practices, and even this infrastructure. So this is why the future of the workplace will be now focused on this four major area to make the workplace no longer just in the box, you know, just like what uh, Pedro Aguilar before mentioned, and I attended one of his seminars, there's no box anymore, right? He, he I, it inspired me to talk about, you know, that there are now more than ever, the workplace will become more on what aspects does the person wanted to focus on, whether it's an emotional aspect wherein, you know, 
I would like to belong to a to an organization that focus on culture, well-being, a trust, you know, value system, or maybe I can still be one of those people who would like to have you know a physical workplace. I'd like to go back to the to the workplace. A lot of us are feeling that you know pandemic fatigue, so we wanted to go back to the office rather than at home because we think that the purpose that we're doing will be more on the office space, right? But we wanted the office space to be more agile be more industrial looking or maybe more up to up to speed in terms of what we're doing to inspire us and at the same time the technology that we're using you know this the business models not just the infrastructure and even the hardware that we're using it needs to foster the new business and that's where your e-learning also comes in the traditional classroom uh, training will have to also evolve. You'll have to inject new ways of doing things. And that's where your purposeful workplace comes in, evolving ideas of how leadership should look into new models in terms of the value system. And even the way that we do employee engagement now can also be backed up by e-learning, even the platforms that we're doing right now. I'm, I'm almost at the end of my slides and I'd like to thank everybody for listening. I think what like, I'd like to just really focus on is artificial intelligence is not something that we need to be fear, fearful of. It's actually how we embrace it and how we incorporate this into the culture. You know, this should be an engagement tool so that we can empower our workers. I've been in the training industry for the last 15 years, right? So talent development is also you know, encompassing of how we acquire new people and also retain them by giving them new digital skills. And therefore the workforce now on your, on your left, on your right side of your screen is about understanding how do we automate them now? Because if we automate, we augment and make it more cost efficient, make it more cost effective and give us more human collaboration you know, because now we have we have this transactional and very uh, very tactical jobs that has been taken away. That's being now done by technology or the robotics or machine learning. So we now focus on the soft skills of people. Now more than ever, it's about the people to people interaction, the collaboration now on how we can augment the work we're doing. And therefore, it changes the way that we look at space, the connectivity, you know, the way that we put, you know, uh, importance to content, the 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 focus on being smart in terms of how we use our facilities. It's not about the big offices anymore, but it's about utilizing this space, whether it's a virtual space or a physical space. It's about the work environment that we put in. So just to to finish it off. Uh, of uh, the future of jobs report from the World Economic Forum. These are the top 10 skills that we can incorporate into our e-learning, right? By incorporating complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, you know, courses on people management now more than ever is important because we are not physically connected now in an office. So everything is virtual. So the way that we manage people now has also changed. So how do we now you know, pivot by, you know, making sure that our employees are connected with us. So that's where you're coordinating with others, emotional intelligence, judgment and decision making has now become important rather than technical skills like, you know, of course, getting a license will still be very important. But, you know, because of the pandemic, because of the future of the jobs, you know, e-learning courses are now towards this court, you know, these topics. And development of application that will be focused on service orientation, you know, negotiation, and cognitive flexibility. These are the top 10 skills that we need to skill, upskill the Filipinos to be, if not at par, even further. And that's what we wanted to do in the ASEAN Asian Leadership, uh, Asian, Le Asian Leader uh, Circle is that, you know, we wanted to bring the Filipino into the global scale. And with that, uh, thank you so much for um, inviting me here. And uh, I hope uh, we can see each other again. Thank you. All right. So thank you very much, Marvin, for a very uh, eye-opening talk. No, actually, it's very true. No, so yung mga fears nito dumadagdag na. No, should we should we fear AI? Um, as in in the uh, Terminator movies, or should we? Uh, 
embrace no, its many benefits and potential. Now, everywhere you look, actually, people are asking what aspect of education or um, everything else no, will touch, uh, uh, can be touched by the AI. Now, will a robot uh, take your job? Now, according to the World Economic Forum, the future of jobs report 2020, AI is expected to replace 85 million jobs worldwide by 2025. But, but that may sound scary. No, the report goes on to say that it will also create 97 million new jobs in the same time frame. That as what uh, Mr. Myron Soil had mentioned a while ago. No, we need to build our skills now because the skills that we have pre-pandemic may not be uh, beneficial or useful in today's time in this uh, very fast environment. That is why uh, in the uh, emerging jobs for 2022, it includes roles based on technological innovation like software and application developers, and uh, of course, roles requiring distinctly human traits like sales professionals. Not surprisingly, of course, that these jobs will uh, require both various form of uh, technological competency, no? Um, like programming and systems analysis and distinctly human skills uh, which is still very important like emotional intelligence creativity and critical thinking or what was mentioned a while ago by marvin dun sa kanyang recent na top uh, skills no so before we end our session uh marvin i would like to ask no uh, before we entertain questions no what does uh, this look like no in in the learning room the ai um like I mentioned earlier, I think there, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of innovation that's going to happen, and uh, I think more than just focusing on the AI itself, because AI is, is a tool, you know, right. and it's had, it's always been there available. I think what's really important is the soft skills of how we see the future of work, and of course, the new generation is going to be utilizing it. We don't know exactly how AI is going to look like. Uh, in the next few years, because just example, during the pandemic, we suddenly realized that there are things that is possible that before for many decades is not possible. Just to, like I mentioned, you know, making those technological um, decisions, critical decisions by traditional businesses. And I've seen that happening in this the last 18 months. Imagine the manufacturing industry suddenly have a workforce of flexible you know, people working mm -hmm. at home that's almost impossible in, a, mm -hmm. in an assembly line right so it's about innovation on how we are going to use that and of course the remote remote work uh setup is going to be more available now more than ever so i think how we see ai in terms of e-learning is so limited so we have to expand it so the e-learning is not more than it's not just about the tech not the technical skills it's also about focusing on what's next. So the, 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 the 10 skills that I've mentioned earlier about negotiation, communication, personality development, is not new to us. Mm -hmm. But how we see it, making it more connected holistically for the next generation up to 2025 and making it more connected to AI, you know, example, how we, how we see, you know, uh, how we detect people's depression this is going to be available in AI because of deep learning and machine learning, right? So rather than going to a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a guidance counselor, there's an AI for that, right? Which has, you know, the algorithm to say, okay, at least it's not going to replace a doctor. It's not going to replace a psychologist, but because of the sheer number of people that we need to serve on a daily basis, me, myself as an HR, you know, I serve about a thousand employees on a daily basis. How can I make that decision of, okay, you're, you're having a breakdown. You're not, not having a breakdown. The AI and deep learning will help because if we do surveys and these algorithms will give us, okay, at least it will pinpoint. Right. And that is going to be available, not just in e-learning platforms, but in, in many cases, in other uh, media and other um, technology. Right. Especially in this trying time. So we were actually pushed to our limits. No? And we were forced to adapt to this uh, technological advancement, uh, which uh, we previously only used as a reference, but didn't even uh, take it into consideration that we will use it. But when the pandemic hit us, we were actually forced to adapt to this uh, technological advancement, especially 
in the Philippines. Now, um, for example, in our case, no, for for our um, companies, no, um, here uh, listening to us, no, how can they um, transition their environment from from being uh, so used to uh, traditional classroom uh, based uh, learning? Because uh, they always think that uh, it's still very much preferred that. Um, the, the uh, classroom or on-site is still the best one, but not the self-paced, but not the uh, virtual learning. So how do we how do we uh, communicate to the uh, leaders, especially to the to the employees that uh, virtual learning, self-paced learning are are both no or are still um, efficient and effective? Right. Thanks, Chester. Um, Actually, the, the, the principles and models of, of virtual learning has already been available for many decades. Uh, example, we have the open universities in the U.S., wherein even some Filipinos can take those courses uh, available now. But it's just so happened that now it's focused and it's now on the limelight, if I may say. It's, it's highlighted. Uh, but if you're creating a, bis a business case, if this is new to you, I think look at how you can integrate slowly as a progression, right? You can look at it from a strategic point of view, wherein you can incorporate, you know, this year, next year, and the next, you know, the third year. So that's why by 2025, you're available with the new uh, transition um, uh, management, right? You have your change management in terms of your technology. So I think building that up, so that when you present it to your stakeholders or to your leaders, they understand, okay, we still do the classroom training, of course, with the restrictions of the pandemic, but we are incorporating little by little on aspects that we think will be valuable to our workforce. Example could be, you know, some videos or maybe sometimes, you know, in terms of using uh, how how we can uh, improve, you know, some kind of online interaction, or maybe maybe even a flexible arrangement in terms of incorporating uh, both classroom and self-paced uh, training. You know, we've done this in my previous job in, in the U.S. company 15 years ago. You know, when BlackBerry was still used, and not many people know what BlackBerry is, but you know, these are things that we can say. Okay, this costs as this, there's maybe a subscription to it, but that eventually will become part of our regular, you know, budget. And I think it's it's really important to focus on how AI or e-learning per se will be incorporated to your regular budget. So I think it's about, you know, trying to just uh, tweak or even, you know, put here and put there what we used to be budgeting during the normal, the pre-pandemic times and what is now the pandemic times. And I think I just like to use this because as an HR and as part of the ASEAN group, right? ASEAN HR leader circle is that the talk now for the ASEAN HR's practice is that do not focus on the pandemic. Pandemic is just a phase because even without the pandemic, the talk about AI has always been there since 2015. It's just, again, highlighting what is being practiced now. So focus on not the pandemic, focus on the change, the technological change as per what the you know, World Economic Forum is saying, what the OECD is saying, what the ADB is saying, you know, all of this um, research and groups that are doing those you know, trends that's going to happen because of technology. And technology is not dependent on the pandemic. It's about how we use it in terms of industrialization because it's gonna happen whether there's another pandemic or not, 2025 is something that we need to look forward to and that's where you should focus on in terms of how you should be able to capitalize and leverage on technology that you know. You don't need to jump to the next technology that you don't know. So focus on what you know, integrate a little bit further on the progression and then eventually have your leaders understand, you know, the, the purpose of this holistic uh, strategy that you have for the business. 
All right. So as for my last question, because uh, some of the organizations, because of your talk, they were actually inspired, encouraged, and motivated now to integrate uh, AI in their uh, learning programs. But of course, I would like to know when is the best time for us or for the organization to integrate AI and what will be the careful considerations or steps that we should uh, take a look at before we integrate AI in, the, uh, in our learning uh, systems and processes? That's a wonderful question, Jester. I would answer it in two ways. <laughs> the one is the more pragmatic one and the other one is the more innovative or creative one. Um, I'll answer with first with the innovative because I would say it's now. You don't wait for next time. It's about the now because technology will change. You know, technology is always changing. It keeps on evolving. So if you don't adapt to technology now, you know, then you are going to miss on things and you're definitely not reading the the signs and symptoms of your organizations correctly and have that you know immediately uh had the first aid or have that triage so from a pragmatic point of view it's also about me i'm, I'm answering only from an hr perspective um it's also thinking about the maturity level of the organization what is your culture so if you're if you're a leader who thinking of, is thinking about going to technology, it's about understanding also the culture of your organization. So focus on what's easily, you know, can be inserted into the culture. What is easy to be digested and to be regularly, you know, part of. Uh, I notice about mental health because it is a compliance requirement by the law. There's a lot of new applications now that use AI for for mental health. And that's where we can we can start doing some changes by saying that you know we are complying so why not take on this technology that will be very useful rather than hiring another person that may not be as efficient and effective i'm not saying they're not efficient and effective but of course it's a it's a it's a management decision but also from a technology perspective it also is more efficient so those are the two things it's now and at the same time, look mm -hmm. at the maturity level of your organization. Right. We also have a question here from Sir H. Now, how far are we in terms of competitiveness in AI? Uh, of course, uh, you've been collaborating with leaders in the Philippines as well. Now, based on your observation, um, how do you think uh, far are we in terms of competitiveness in AI? Thank you, uh, Sir H, for that question. I think we have to look at it from two in two fronts. Number one is um, in terms of creation of AI. I think we're still a little bit far in terms of AI in the Philippines, in terms of creating AI. Uh, number one, because of infrastructure. Number two, because of policies, uh, you know, policies that is with the government and of course the laws that are available. So that's still pretty much loose. The third would be, you know, in terms of the capability of the Filipinos in terms of education. We're still not yet there. There are attempts. Definitely will not discredit that. There are a lot of great universities who are offering courses on AI, but it's just an attempt. Unlike those um, nations who have been there for decades, you know, formation of AI, like in the US, like the Silicon Valley, right? So that's the hub of all of those AI and the technology per se, right? Um, but also from the front of organizations, right? So I would say that there's a lot of Filipinos who are competitive enough in theory, but in terms of scaling, we are a little still bit far. But in terms of how we can learn AI, we are already there. It's just really about the experience and the exposure of Filipinos and having that really, you know, globalized and how we should look at it from an expansion point of view. I think we'll be there in the next couple of years, hopefully by 2025. It really focus from a infrastructure point of view and at the same time, our exposure and experience globally. Right, so it's actually good to know that even uh, we're, we're not really on that uh, level yet, but we are actually now in a working progress. So with that, uh, thank you very much again, uh, Mr. Marvin Zoilo, for this uh, eye-opening talk.